over and over and over again. And I can give you simple facts, even if you're a stupid person with a Ph.D. and you live in, in uh, New York City and think you know everything. Even if you're the smartest moron in New York or L.A., spend five minutes to research the Vostok ice flows. VOS ice core samples. VOST, okay. That's number one. Number two, idiots. The schmuck president was in Alaska last week. I'm standing on the glacier. Look at that. Here's where it was in 54. It was in 62. Look at that. The glacier is retreating. Schmendrick. Whole north, northern hemisphere was covered with snow and ice 300 years, three, uh, three millennia ago. So he's standing there like, does this man know anything? Did Obama learn from Alinsky that when water melts, it becomes steam? Does he understand that when a glacier retreats, you see trees? Or what does that mean, Mr. Obama? Duh. What does it mean that when a glacier retreats because it's melting and you see trees? What does that tell you? Even a, a liar like you, a basic street liar like you. See, he's Al Sharpton with a smoother g game. I don't think you understand why I have such contempt for him. He has a great voice and a nice suit does not make for a great president. He is Al Sharpton with a nice suit and a great voice. See, when the glacier retreats, Mr. Obama, and you see trees, that indicates something. Something you didn't learn from Karl Marx. What that means is that there was a time when there was no glacier there, and flora flourished. And then, eventually, an ice age appeared and covered the trees. So what caused the ice age, Mr. Obama? It couldn't have been Al Gore. It couldn't have been uh, Al Gore's wife freezing the earth with her chilly temperatures. What did it? But the earth changed. I don't know. There was no industrialization. Why did suddenly the warming occur? The ice, little ice age ended. What, what made that happen? Then a little ice age occurred. What, what caused it to occur? Long before industrialization, 1500s, ice appeared. Then ice took 200 years slower to go away. Why? Natural cycle. I'm not arguing for pollution. I've worked against it all my life. But please, what I care about the most is honesty and the truth. I hate politicians because they don't even know what the word honesty means. They're born liars. They belong in a freak show that they can lie with such a plum and not even th think that anyone knows what they're saying. So now the Pope's an expert now on, on ice and melting ice caps and weather. As Michael Savage said, the only thing the Pope knows about the weather is that when it rains, his aides take out umbrellas. That's the extent of his knowledge of climate science. Why would this man be talking about climatology and come to the United States? Why would that moron drunk, John Boehner, permit him to speak before the U.S. Congress? How could that drunk permit this? That, that shameful drunk, John Boehner, voted along with the communists to put the Pope in the, in the Congress? I'm offended by it. For three reasons. One, we have a separation of church and state. Secondly, this pope is a communist. And thirdly, there was no reason for him to speak to, to this nation about global warming without any refutation. Bothers me deeply. It's all propaganda. All propaganda. So he's coming here to do that. That bothers me. So the question is, why would the pope invest any time in this global warming issue when he's got a bankrupt church, a, sm a diminishing uh, number of attendees on the pews, Unfunded pensions, what's he trying to do? Well, a good percentage of the income that the church gets comes from the federal government. Refugee resettlement. That's number one. Right now it's in a $2 billion uh, number for housing, feeding, clothing, transporting, and God knows what else they do for them. Catholic charities, racket, business, just like uh, uh, Baptist charities, Jewish charities, you name it. They're all in on the racket. That ended the separation of church and state. Obama bought them all off with federal grants. And that's number one. So well, what does that have to do with global warming, doctor? You still haven't finished your argument yet. Well, here's what it has to do with global warming, Schmendrick. If this Schmendrick, Pope of ours, of yours rather, Pope of yours, is a friend of yours or a friend of mine, not my friend. If this Pope could get away with his lie along with Obama and the other gangsters and then say that the rising seas are going to cause more refugees, you have to take them all in now from Micronesia, wherever. Then they all come here. Guess who gets Guess who gets to take care of all the refugees and resettles them? You got it. The church. Church gets the money. So it's all got to do with money and the story, follow the dollar, period. You got that? So let me go back to my L.A. trip. Because there's some interesting things, that's all. So we did 
L.A. trip, Motor Mouth Girls. I did movie star, I did French Strongman. Now, the last thing I didn't talk about, because I don't think you're interested, is I then the next day, out of total boredom, before the ride home, I went to an antique store on Rodeo Drive, and you say, oh, come on. You're smart enough to know what that is. It turned out the prices were lower than most antique stores. And I bought the most, I'm going to make it short because no one buys this stuff. Because I grew up in an antique store, my father's store. I still have an affection for certain types of items. So I bought, and I'm a clock fanatic. I bought a three-piece mantle set, 1900, circa 1900. Bronze ormolu, if you know what that is. Marble. And it's known as a liar clock. No, not the type of clock that Obama looks at for the time every day. This refers to the musical instrument, L-Y-R-E, not the type that he uses in the White House. This guy wouldn't even tell you the time correctly. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Now we have a big one from the 80s, Easy Top on the Savage Nation. That's all. Why talk about politics? The effect it has. What's the point of talking about politics? We elected these schmuck Republicans. Look what we got, a drunk, a drunk in charge, a stooge of Obama called Boehner. If Obama tells him to come in and, and, and wash his clothes, he would do it for him. Some separation of powers we have here. And the sellouts in the Supreme Court. Look at them, what they must have over that guy, Roberts. I'd like to see those pictures. To share those pictures on the Internet. The votes we get out of him with that judge in Kentucky. I'd like to see the file they have on that judge. The, 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 the little portfolio. The 52 cards. Now we got the Pope to deal with. Now it wasn't bad enough we have sellout politicians. Now we got a, a, a Pope, a communist Pope. Straight out communist pope. Don't mince words already. Why must everybody dance on eggs when you say the pope? Why? There's, by the way, a revolution going on inside the church over what this guy is doing. A revolution is brewing of, of conservative leaders are freaked out over this communist. They finally see it. What, what anyone with a brain could see from the, from the get-go? This guy is espousing. The pope of the Catholic church is espousing opinions that are very, very similar to that of Jeremiah Wright, Barack Obama's preacher, who said, you know, you know what he said, right? Remember that? The Pope is Jeremiah Wright with a smoother act, the same way that Obama is Al Sharpton with a smoother act. It's all revolutionary communism, or as you call it, liberation theology, whichever way you want to put it. And I don't like it, nor should you. Asylum seekers spread west and north, says the LA Times, the Pope urges every parish in Europe to take in one family as the arriving migrants disperse in Germany. Don't get me started on Merkel. Merkel is the biggest sellout in the history of the German nation. This woman started out as another one who faked conservatism and now became the most psycho leftist you could ever imagine. Amid one of the greatest human displacements since World War II. Blah, blah, blah. So let's talk about the displacement that's going on and who caused it, Hillary Clinton. You wanna know where this displacement came from? Hillary Clinton. Why do I say that? First of all, I was the first to say it in the media. Now I see it dribbling out in drips and drabs. The second and third rate intellectuals are already picking it up. Hillary Clinton espoused the uh, Arab Spring lie. Now let me go back on that one. George Soros funded it. Zbigniew Brzezinski designed it. Hillary Clinton enacted it. She broke Libya, threw out Gaddafi. What happened? Went after Assad. What happened? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you get the picture, the bigger picture, the global picture? The most unmitigated disaster in modern history is what's going on in the Middle East as a result of Hillary Clinton's Arab Spring. And it never comes up. Say what you will about the Republican debates. They're vigorous. They're intellectually honest. They're diverse in opinion. They disagree with each other. They call each other names. While she gets away with virtual murder. Not a word. Anyone asks that woman a word. Like Mrs. Clinton. You take any, do you take any responsibility for the uh, migration crisis in Europe as a result of the Arab Spring? Why don't you ask her that question? That, that two-faced phony that's going to... You know, none of them will ask her a question because they can't find her. 
It's like find the candidate hidden behind the witch from Florida. That a piece of work. That is Debbie Schultz Wasserwoman. Wow. I fled New York because of women like her. Women like Debbie Schultz Wasserman, Wasserwoman. There's a reason I fled New York and wound up in the jungles of the South Seas collecting plants and never hear their voices again. Savage.